in Malaya's jungles, high in the thick, dark hills, live the Temia, one of the many aboriginal tribes of Malaya, and perhaps the finest. The jungle is their home. They have tamed it to serve their purpose. Sturdy, handsome and amiable, the Temia live in a way that many of us might envy. Lords of their universe, self-sufficient, independent, and proud. As soon as his hands could hold it, young Awe learned to use the blowpipe and to join the men in the thrills of the hunt. At the longhouse, beside the ladung where the crops are planted, the women have their prescribed duties, bearing water from the river in lengths of bamboo, preparing the food, and practicing a set of domestic crafts. Strips of dried palm leaves are steeped in colors distilled from jungle roots and plants. When dry, they'll be woven into mats and baskets. As always in Temia society, this is a group activity, a time for jokes and laughter. For life is mostly lived in public, and it's the custom to share the duties as well as the pleasures. Panda is a guest at the longhouse. He really belongs to a house on the other side of the river, but he's paying his court to Anjang, the headman's daughter. Anjang is still making up her mind. The choice is hers alone, for that is the Temya way. If she chooses Panda, he will simply move in and live with her and become part of the big longhouse family. There is no marriage ceremony, but nor is there any divorce. Anjang is growing in dignity as she takes over the extra responsibilities of a headman's daughter, for her mother is old and ill. Since history was recorded, these gentle people have never known war. They kill only for food. Masters of the blowpipe, their only weapon, they've discovered that the sap of the ipo tree will tip their darts with poison. The headman, Tomantri Anga, is leading a dart-making party. 
wickling the slender darts from the spine of a jungle palm. The blowpipe is a simple masterpiece of deftness and accuracy, cut from a special length of bamboo without a join. It's light to handle, and a puff of breath can kill at 40 feet. The poison, concentrated by warming over a fire, kills immediately the dart pierces the prey. Since the work is shared, there is always time for play and for the arts of leisure. Musical instruments are also made from bamboo, like this nose flute that Awe is learning to play. Anjan is in no mood for music. Her mother has become worse. And Anjan is afraid that the halak has failed to ward off the spirits of death. In the halak, or medicine man, lies the power to invoke the good spirits against the evil ones who seek perpetually for Tamiya souls. <laughs> But with Anjang's mother, his invocations to the spirits are of no avail. She knows her time has come, and she hands on to her daughter her treasured necklace of the teeth of many monkeys. As is the custom, the whole group shares the sorrow of bereavement. But as they follow the body of their headman's wife in its shroud of woven leaf, a great fear hangs heavy over them. A fear that the evil spirits are not yet appeased and lurk about to snatch more souls. Into the shallow grave on the burial hillside, they tenderly place the dead woman's few possessions. The mats and baskets she wove, her cooking utensils, her clothes and trinkets, so that her spirit may be at rest and not return to haunt them. For the next month, they must live in the deepest mourning, no more than just keep alive, until custom allows the halak to contact the guardian spirit again in a ceremonial dance and restore the soul of the group. A month of waiting in fear.
when the halak reaches a state of trance, or as the Temiar say, when he forgets his own self, they believe he is possessed by his guardian spirit, who speaks to them through him. The evil spirits of this mountain are angry. They do not like you here. Leave this place and make a new ladang across the river and under the hill you call Fish Trap. There the spirits will welcome you. And so the fires are put out. They know they must leave the old longhouse and the community packs up its goods and prepares for the march. Pandak knows that he should now wait, at least until after the new ladang is planted, before Anjan will begin to think about him again. He could leave the group now and go back to his own. But he chooses to stay, to throw his skill and young strength into the common task of rebuilding. So with few backward glances at the old life, the group sets out with all they possess towards the mountain they call like a fish trap. left the evil spirits far behind, and ahead there is all the fun of opening a new ladang, of fishing an untouched river, of hunting new grounds, tests to make a man feel his strength and earn a woman's pride. This is the place, announces Tumantri Anga. This is our new Ladang, and here we will build our house. Let us build fast and well. And he distributes axes and knives to every able-bodied man and woman. When they've made their flexible handles, the work of clearing begins.
Now the Temiar shows his skill as a builder. Generations, perhaps centuries, of experience in making use of jungle materials have taught him what to use for each purpose. To construct a sturdy house, rainproof yet cool, for upwards of 80 people, without a single nail and no implement but a long, broad knife. Balancing miraculously on the saplings which form the uprights, they trim them straight and lash the cross beams with strips of rotan. Meanwhile, living in temporary shelters, the women lace palm leaves together to form the thatch of the roof. Theirs is a bamboo culture. Bamboo, the all provider which the Temiar turns to his every purpose. The supports for the roof and the foundation of the central floor. Bamboo, split open in a simple, effective way, forms the flooring itself. A springy floor sprung for dancing, which will be one of its main uses. patterns make outer walls and partitions between each family.
while they're building, the healthy appetites of active people must be satisfied. But until the house is finished, it's a plain diet of tapioca, cooked in sections of bamboo, which now appears as a cooking utensil. Tapioca is the staple food, but when the ladang is yielding, maize and rice will add variety, together with fish and animals from the traps and hunting expeditions. In four or five days, with everyone doing his bit, the house is finished and the family moves in, or rather, group of families. For it embraces many distant relations, all owing respect and duty to each other. Here is the secret of Tamiya's strength. The extended family, as it's called, provides ample manpower for settled agriculture. This security of food supply affords a standard of living far above mere subsistence. And thus the Temiya year begins its quiet round again and life falls into familiar patterns. In this near seasonless climate, where there is no autumn or winter or spring, the year takes its shape from the opening of the new Ladan and the time that jungle products take to gather and prepare. Maize and millet, tapioca and rice are planted and tobacco for their homemade cigarettes, all according to a set pattern. The ladang is communal, the work and produce are shared. There are traps to set, simple but ingenious, to catch the jungle game, whose habits are studied and understood by expert trackers. The women of the Temiya are no less inventive, and much of their basket and net making is fine of texture and sophisticated in pattern. These domestic crafts are an individual enterprise and for sale, but the women put as much art and skill into their own utensils as they do into these more elaborate articles that they'll sell in the town. The quality of life is important to the Tamiya the way it is lived from day to day. And there's always time for play, for jokes and laughter, and for the good-mannered exchanges of a people whose way of living can truly be called civilized.
When there's a fish drive on, everyone joins in. Tuba root has to be gathered and pounded, and special dams built in the river. Crushed root stuns the fish, which float drunkenly to the surface, making catching no more than a gathering up in the hands. A fish drive means a feast out of doors, when tales of daring and skill are exchanged, and proud boasts made. For the Temia are no different from anyone else, and like to tell a good fishing story. And the children fall asleep, comfortably full of fish, and with a tune in their ears. When the women start counting their baskets and mats, the men know it's time to talk about a trip to town. As in all matters affecting the group, it is discussed in open session, the centre floor of the longhouse being the forum, or council chamber. The town is 50 miles and six rapids down river. Is there enough produce to sell to make the journey worthwhile? How many rafts will be needed? Not everyone will go. Some must stay to look after the ladder. Success depends on careful planning. Awe has never been to the market, and he's hoping that this year they'll reckon him old enough to go. The group decision is yes, and as quickly as possible while the weather lasts. About 15 rafts will be needed, and working fast and joyfully, they build them in a few days.
bamboo again. Supremely suitable for this particular task. Flexible and resilient, the bamboo rafts glide over and around the rocks and rapids as no other material would. Now the produce is loaded. Rotuns gathered from the jungle. Baskets, mats and fish traps. And the convoy prepares to set off. Soon they'll meet the first of the rapids, in half fear, half joy. Another of the hazards of nature, another test of manhood and skill.
and into the quiet water, without mishap, sails the convoy of rafts. The prospect of town bustle ahead of them, and possibly Tarzan at the cinema. At the market they'll sell everything, even the rafts and paddles, for there's no going back by river. They must hope to hire an elephant or two to help carry the goods they buy. And so, home again, laden with stocks of their few necessities, such as salt and knives, and rejoicing in the luxuries that the sale of their own goods has brought them. Sarongs and beads, suitcases and mattresses, cigarette lighters and lipstick. This is the reward of a season's work, of truce with the spirits. Sharing out time, and they can't wait to go into the house. But everything is undone and tried on just as it tumbles down from the elephants. There is room in the Temiar economy for things that are loved and wanted just for their beauty, not only for their usefulness. And when evening falls, they will express their thankfulness in a fashion that time and generations of ancestors have hallowed, in a dance of sheer joy. The Temiar dance of thanksgiving and supplication. Dancing is an expression of the Temiar group soul. Its yearnings, its sufferings, and its delights.
and when Anjang and Panda steal away to begin their life together, they know their own happiness will depend on the spiritual strength of their community. Thus the tribe renews itself, and old Tormentry is well pleased. The young are mated and bring forth new life. The spirits are content. His people will prosper. Oh, no, I don't.